Hey, traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, March 25, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Let's start with another pullback day for the S&P. They're still not far from the all-time highs. They're still well above all the moving averages. They're still in an uptrend. The trend is your friend. That's the big picture. But wait, there's more. Last week, specifically on Thursday, I talked about waning velocity. In the live room, before the opening bell on Thursday, I gave traders in the live room a trade that could last into, let's say, the first part of this week. That was a short to tape at 523.50 and above. They spiked it by just pennies. And here we are today, closing price right around 520, three and a half dollars, 35 S&P handles. Not a tremendous trade, but a live room group trade nonetheless. There was more specifics, but I gave you in a nutshell what we did as a group before the opening bell, during the regular session, right out of the gate in the morning on Thursday. We talked about it on Friday. Some traders took some profit on Friday. Some were holding a trailer. Some traders took more profit today. Some are still holding a trailer. Some have already booked all the profit. It was a nice stand-up double, even a triple for some traders. It was a nice short-term trade based on a formula that I have called waning velocity. It happens to be also part of the Lazy Swing Trader Automagical Algo system. Waning velocity is something that I have formula-driven. The daily chart had waning velocity on Thursday. How do you like them apples? What else do we have from a longer-term perspective? We have a trend line. She's above the trend line. She's bullish over the bigger picture, but is extended from home base. What is home base? The 20 period moving average on any chart. On this weekly chart, the 20 period moving average is all the way down here at 486, 487 area. Doesn't mean they have to come back down there, but they generally won't get too far from home base without being reattracted, reacquainted, paying a visit to home base, paying homage to home base. We have more tinfoil hat stuff on the docket. Today we have the penumbral lunar eclipse. That happened around mid-morning today, early April. We have a full solar eclipse. Big time stuff. For the record, might want to write this down, put it on a sticky note. In April and beyond, so it's the and beyond, make sure you hear what I say, not what you want to hear. In April begins, not just in April. In April begins another period of long-term waning velocity in the S&P. That means it could last a couple of months. Waning velocity on the upside. The velocity is up. In April, they will begin a period of waning velocity. Look how far from home base the monthly chart is. How far do you think she's going to get without pulling back and giving home base a chance to creep up to price, price come down toward home base? How far is she going to go before that takes place? Not too much farther. Let's run through some charts just to get a sense from a shorter term perspective where the market is so you look at a four hour chart and it looks similar to the daily chart above all the moving averages trend is your friend obviously you have a 20 period moving average and a breakup candle low that will become important when she does pay a visit down around 515 for argument's sake spike the 20 period moving average on this chart 515 51450 will be some garden variety of chart support might want to write that down. Three-hour chart looks very similar. Save 515, give or take. 
20 period moving average is a little higher, but the 50 period moving average now comes in just below 515. 515, give or take, will be important. Write that down again or put another Roman numeral down next to it. Two hour chart coming into its 20 period moving average. Nowhere near 515 on this chart, but what you do on this chart have is a former breakout area. Talked about this in the live room today. Can you identify the most recent breakout area on whether it's a two hour chart, a one hour chart, any chart you wanna look at, can you identify and post under the video where the latest breakout or the last breakout in the sequence is? Won't that be garden variety of chart support? The answer is yes, and by the way, Circle back to the trade, the short trade. We're buying puts on Thursday into this week. Short term, short dated, not same day, but short dated puts in the S&P. For those traders in the live room that participated in that, let me hear your comments. Let me see your comments under the video. How'd you do? Did you participate? What kind of dough did you make? Do you like the live room? How's it working for you? Let's hear some trader commentary for the benefit of everybody else, please. It's how the world goes around. Be in a pay it forward situation. I'm in a pay it forward situation. I'm trying to pay my knowledge forward. You pay your results forward to other traders that may not understand or believe that this is working. Hourly chart looks a little different. Below the 20 period moving average, made a bearish flag pattern all day long, began to break down into the end of the day. Here's another thing I told the live room today before we wrapped up the morning session. I said, look, remember, here are some important numbers that I had on the board for the inside the number members, and then we talked through it in the live room. And what I said was, at 3.30, if they're down below 4.20, 5.20, sorry, 5.20.45, Look out because they can hit him into the end of the day. Well, let's look at a five-minute chart and see what happened. Here's 340, 350, 345, sorry, 350, 355 into the end of the day. Below 520, 45, and they can hit him into the end of the day, quote, unquote. What did they do today? They hit him into the end of the day. Being in the live room is a learning experience. Where are they going tomorrow? Come over to Inside the Numbers and or the live room and the numbers will be posted bright and early starting at zero dark 30 before most folks had a cup of coffee. Speaking of Inside the Numbers, let's check out where we were today. We knew 52045 was going to be extremely important. It turned out to be really, really extremely important. So we had some downside stuff. They didn't get there. We had some upside stuff. They didn't get there. They hung around 520, 45, never strayed away too much. You could see here, when you look at this hourly chart, you have a bear flag pattern into all day long in a very narrow range. This is not a trader's tape, unfortunately. However, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. I was prepared with a bull bear pivot today. If they were to rise or fall above or below a certain place, that's fine. But what we did then is narrow down after the opening bell that 520.45 was in fact our pivot today and they hung around the pivot all day long. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. Everything's in here, all the numbers you need. Above this, they go to this. Below this, they go to this. It works on candle closes, not just a spike. And that means starts with a five-minute candle, morphs to a 10-minute candle. After that, it's a 15-minute candle. The longer price is above or below one of these numbers, the more likely it is the door is open to the next number. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double-check the work. Here it is again, 52045. Bull case for another leg higher above, below, she can leak. That's pretty much what happened all day long. We had some stock trades today, so we had something for everybody. We had three potential stocks on the move, only one hit its entry objective on, and Intel did not. We'll take a look at the chart of UAL. We also had some trades in the live room. We had Apple. We had some traders in NVIDIA. We had targets in Amazon. We had a price in Meta. We have all kinds of stuff going on. UAL 4362, 
They gave us the deal, hung around there for a little while, back and forth, ran some tests at 43.62, went back up in the other direction, gave you the base hit, the stand-up double, gave you the deal. This is the hourly chart. This is what a five-minute chart looks like after they were finished testing 43.62. They just grinded higher for the rest of the day. Nice trade, identified long before the opening bell. How about Apple? We had a bunch or a truckload of traders in Apple today at 169.95. They spiked it by a few pennies, down about 30 or so cents, give or take. Ripped it back up in the other direction, went up for the remainder of the day until the last couple of candles up to about 172. Nice trade, bucket full of traders in the live room in Apple. That was a real-time trade. Here's another one we had on the board for traders today in the live room. 505 was for Meta. They didn't hit it. They came up short. These don't make it to stocks on the move list because they're not really moving in the pre-market. But I do the work, and if they start to move, we can address them as traders in real time. That's why I do the preliminary work. What's going on over in Camp IWM today? First, we'll start with the big picture Daily chart, above all the moving averages. Trend is your friend, nothing wrong with the tape. Weekly chart, above all the moving averages. Trend is your friend. So we want to start there. We want to start with the foundation that the daily chart, weekly charts are in a bullish format. You go back to the daily and you say, all right, well, what if they drop below the 20-period moving average? Then what? Well, then they start to climb down or leak down into this breakup candle. Well, Okay, fine. Is there a number down there that's worthy from either the automagical algo system or just the automagical number system? Write this down, put it on a sticky note, 202.15. That's an area, the top end of a support zone. The traders in the live room tomorrow will have the other end of that support zone, but that's the first place they can bounce the tape if they're even close to that. It should be an attractant, it's magnetic, it's also support, 202.15, could be off by a few pennies, it's a give or take. Sometimes they come up short, other times they spike them through. What if they're ripping them back in the other direction on Turnaround Tuesday? Well, you got this high here, right around that 208 to 208.91, 209 area, and then you have this pivot here. So that's what they'd be working on if they're going in the northern direction on a turnaround Tuesday, rip them back in the other direction situation. By the way, same thing with the spiders. This is a pullback in an uptrend. Look at what's happened all the way up. Little pullback, go higher. Pullback, go higher. Pullback for a day or two, go higher. Pullback for a day, pullback for two days, pullback for a day, Pull back for two or two and a half days here. That's all it is. Nothing says she can't go up higher tomorrow. If she comes down lower, we'll have areas to buy it. This is still a pullback in an uptrend. Write it down. Put it on a sticky note. Let's go over to team transports. You know, daily chart, you're above all the moving averages. That's the bull case. You're in an uptrend. But the bear case is you may have put in a lower high, and if she gets below the moving averages, that could promote more downside behavior all the way down here toward the low of this breakup candle, the low area, say the low 20, 25%, 15,550, give or take. Team transports. Let's not lose sight of the big picture weekly chart. This is a bullish eating time off the clock box above all the moving averages. This is a bullish, it's not a flag pattern, but it's a bullish eating time off the clock in a range pattern. Anything wrong with the Qs, the Q people above all the moving averages, same routine. It's a pullback in the midst of an uptrend until it's not, until proven otherwise, that's what we have to go with. We have to go with, take the market at face value, we're the umpire calling balls and strikes. We want to see both sides of the market. We want to see where it turns bearish. We want to know why it's bullish. We want to know where it stays bullish. If above X, it stays bullish. Above all the moving averages, stays bullish. Line in the sand for now. Break up candle low, 438.06. That's our next bogey if she should come down again tomorrow we don't want to see them closing below that number as long as they stay above that 20 period moving average and the next breakup candle low in the sequence she's in a bullish uptrend we're going to go with that xlf next number achieved 4170 
still in an uptrend. This is a pullback operation, four tenths of 1%. We're not going to make a federal case out of it. Although that was a nice reversal-ish candle on Friday. Why is it ish? Well, they made a new high, took out the prior day's high and low. So that's an engulfing candle, but you didn't have accompanying heavy volume with institutional conviction. We'll just say above all the moving averages, trend is bullish, come below the 20 period moving average, and you may have seen the high at least for now. The financials is a big foundational part of the market. If there's nothing wrong with the financials as a whole, meaning the XLF and some of the other financial indices as a whole, then there's nothing structurally wrong with the market. But if the financials start to crack, look out below, you might want to get a bungee cord. Smash mouth down 56 cents or one quarter of 1%. We're not going to make a federal case out of that. We have the same thing we've had before. Now they're eating time off the clock. You can make a case in a bullish formation. Why is that? Well, you have move off the low. We talked about this low. We talked about what it was. Many traders bought this low from the live room, from these videos, from inside the numbers, from wherever you are. If you saw me talk about this five to 10 times, then if you wanted to buy the low, that was a decent opportunity. But this, we could say, is a bullish flag developing off that low. That would be developing in order to build some energy to run a test higher, which would be up toward the top end of this big time breakdown candle. And this breakdown candle up here is a reversal candle. So you see that high? That's a reversal candle. So running a test of it is normal. Getting above it, normal, not meaning they have to do it, but they can do it. But getting above it is the bull case close above the high of that breakdown candle and that will be energy released in the northern direction for another leg higher. That was on volume, institutional participation, other semiconductor stocks look the same. That was a reversal. This is now eating time off the clock, but there's no guarantee at all that they're going to make another leg higher. They're just at face value right now eating time off the clock. And there's your lesson for the day on this chart. Using SMH has nothing to do with semis, just has to do with the makeup and setup and current makeup of this chart. Could be anything on here. Doesn't have to say SMH, could say ABC, IBM, XYZ, whatever alphabet soup you want to say. All charts act and react the same way. The names and the vehicles don't really matter. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.